and good morning. Good morning. Um, it's an absolute pleasure to be out in front of a live audience. Um, my shareholders, some of who post on uh, the share chat forums, thought I did a rubbish job as I was doing Zoom presentations online last year as we were doing our capital raising. So hopefully my performance today is somewhat better and they will approve. For those of you who don't know anything about Beowulf, Beowulf is an exploration and development company. We're listed in London and Stockholm and we're over 73% owned by Nordic investors. Our purpose is to be a responsible and innovative company. Um, we are looking to create value for our shareholders but also wider society and the environment. And the way we do that is to produce raw materials critical for what we believe is the transition to a green economy. This is all the discussion that's taking place in the Nordic region at the moment and especially at this time with COP26. We're positioned in three different business areas. In Sweden, we, are, we own the Kallak Iron Ore project in Norrbotten County. We're 100% owners of that. And this iron ore asset, even though it's been a long, long in development, over 15 years, is sitting at the top of the s supply chain in Norrbotten, where in the last three years we've seen major developments in fossil-free steel making. In Finland, we've got a business called Grafentech. We're 100% owner of Grafentech. That's our graphite subsidiary, which is also well positioned within a developing Finnish battery cluster. And we are the only anode material, developing anode material producer within that country. And then in Kosovo, since 2018, we've been exploring for base metals and precious metals through an investment in our, a, a company called Vardar Minerals. And we believe that Vardar is a potential source of new min metal supply to enable Europe to, have, to achieve its green trans transition aims. So across the portfolio, we have a variety of metals, all of which are, have different applications to transition to a green economy. When we look at iron ore, we're talking about major infrastructure projects, graphite into uh, lithium ion, ion batteries for both uh, electric vehicles and renewables, copper in electrification of society and electrical systems, zinc for galvanizing iron ore, iron, steel, steel, and then gold is also in the portfolio. When we talk about being a responsible business, Bale this year started its ESG journey. Now my, my own take, having been in the mining industry for 25 years, is that the mining industry has been doing ESG for, for many years. Um, ESG, when, it, when we apply it to Beowulf, is bringing discipline uh, and enabling us to communicate to our stakeholders and our investors about how we are managing the company in a, in a well-mannered well way and what's important to us and what's important to our stakeholders on the ground where our projects are located. So moving on to iron ore in Sweden. So there's not many reasons to remember 2020, but one of those is that uh, iron ore was one of the best performing assets. Uh, if you were in production, as some of our peers were in Sweden, it was a very good time to be mining. Unfortunately, we are still in the development stage and still looking to permit our Calic project. But that strength in iron ore has continued through to this year, even though there's been some pullback. And our asset in, in Sweden is very well located, given the developments that are taking place within Norbotten in fossil free steel making projects. Um, Hubrix is a collaboration between the state iron ore company LKB, SSAB, the Swedish steel maker, and Vattafall, the power company in Sweden. Uh, that project has been in development now for about two to three years. But HG Green Steel announced this year that they want to build a, a steel making facility in Norbotten that they're looking to have in production by about 2024, producing two and a half million tonnes of steel and then with an expansion plan to 2030 to produce 5 million tonnes of green steel. And that project is located just down the road from our Calic Island project. So we're pretty excited about that and that caught us all by surprise when it was announced in February this year. And Norbotten is, is very unique in the sense that all of its power comes from renewable electricity from hydro. And so this, basically what you are doing with any major capital project is you are lef leveraging that renewable power in any industrial application you can develop. 
So even though from a shareholder perspective, uh, we, our shareholders are still waiting for us to deliver a permit for Calais, we've actually had quite a busy 12 months. We finished off 2020 reassessing the, the test work that we've done on the products that we can generate from Calais to basically validate what we have been saying about in, in 2015 about being able to produce a super concentrate. With our assessment last year, we, we demonstrated again that we, we are the market leading uh, product when you compare us to what's currently available and what could be available in the future. And specifically, we're looking at uh, our near neighbour LKB and their highest grade product. We came into this year, we also started to, do, uh, to, to re evaluate our geological database and uh, do an upgrade on our mineral resource estimate and the exploration target that we've got at Calac and our licenses to the south. And we achieved both those aims. Increasing the, the resource for Calac North, which is a project we're looking to get permitted at the moment, but also expanding and increasing the, the potential iron ore mineralisation we believe is available to us, um, which is now just short of 400 million tonnes, and which we could believe could support a mining operation for upwards of 30 years plus. And then finally, just to touch again on the point of the ideal location, you know, Sweden is, is a great country to be doing uh, work in for all sorts of different reasons. Um, a skilled workforce, uh, a stable jurisdiction. Yes, it's got uh, issues with politics and getting mines permitted, but it's got great infrastructure, uh, especially where we're looking to operate 40 kilometers from rail ports uh, to the north and to the south, and also uh, potential customers just down the road from us. And really, I've said this before, but Calac, the, t the time is now for a project such as Calac. Um, the direction of travel for the last couple of years, two or three years, and for, for many for long before that, has been one of climate emergency, and there's a growing conversation in Sweden around the need for more mines, and that's across the political spectrum. Um, we are in the right place at the right time, and especially when you think about the contribution that mines can make to rural economies. Um, the municipality that we're located in is, uh, needs investment and job creation, and that's exactly what our project can do, bringing hundreds of jobs and billions of second investment to a municipality that is desperately in need. Coming on to graph intake in Finland. The conversation in Europe, if you're in the battery space, is all about batteries, all about electrical vehicles, all about gigafactories. And uh, beyond that, in, 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 in recent uh, times, now it's about primary raw material supply. Where is all the material going to come from to actually make these batteries? And the circular economy story about what we're going to do with the batteries that we produce that end, reach the end of their life cycle and how they, those will be reused. Beowulf stepped into the graphite space in 2016 when we acquired what was Fenniscandian Resources and we changed the name of the company uh, this summer to Graphintech to more reflect what we believe is the direction that we're going in which is to be further downstream than just purely uh, a mining company that's generating uh, graphite concentrate. One of the biggest developments this year for us was to, to sign in a memorandum of understanding with Epsilon Advanced Materials. Uh, I had the benefit of going to India in, in late September to see Epsilon's operations um, which are very substantial at a company that's been around since 2010 uh, and developed his business uh, from being a uh, carbon black business into an advanced materials business and uh, in the last couple of years into the anode space. The conversation in Europe we believe is all around gigafactories, predominantly around cathode and very little attention being paid for anode. Uh, and what we've found is that within Finland we have a very collaborative working environment. We're being very well supported uh, by the Finnish state through Business, business Finland. Uh, and we have pretty much a unique position. So much of what we have been doing within Beowulf is somewhat of a slow burn. And the longer I've been in this industry, the more patient I've had to become. Uh, we, are, we have been steadily beavering away um, with our discussions and the work that we've been doing with Epsilon and we hope in the coming months to be able to talk to the market more about that. 
but the focus has been very much on establishing what we call a strategic processing hub, which actually is an anode materials plant, which uh, in an ideal world will take graphite from our uh, first mining project, which is Italampi, of which we've been doing a scoping study over the last few months, and that's near completion, um, to have basically established the, the supply chain within Finland, and, 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 and through doing that, to create security of supply, sustainability of supply, and transparency. Everybody knows where graphite is going to come from. I've already touched on the support we're getting from Business Fund. We had another uh, successful outcome in the, in the summer this year. Um, Business Fund that have contributed 871,000 euros to a, to a budget of 1.6 million, basically to get us to a point where we are uh, at feasibility with that anode materials plant that we've been looking to, to establish. And, and also the bat trace uh, project. I was watching the news in the last few days in the Channel 4 program on uh, cobalt mining in the DRC and uh, how the communities around the mining project were not benefiting from the raw materials development and the mining that was going on and then uh, the criticism that the companies and the owners who weren't named actually in the program uh, were extracting the wealth and not actually contributing anything back to those people that are actually living on the doorstep. And, and living with consequences of the mining operation. I think what I have seen uh, in the last couple of years is a, a conversation within Europe and Sweden and Finland is that those countries should be producing the metals which they're able to, to, sub to service the needs which those economies have and shouldn't be exporting uh, their needs to other parts of the world. And if, if those projects are being developed in other parts of the world, then they have to develop to the same standards as, as countries such as Finland and Sweden um, are holding mining companies and, and investors too. So this is where you know, transparency uh, gets talked a lot about, but with Beowulf's journey on the ESG road, and also our involve, involvement in projects like batteries, and Sweden is doing the same in, in this space. Uh, we want to be at the forefront of demonstrating exactly things like carbon footprint and uh, the way in which the company is operating in, in terms of the communities it's engaging with to, to show full transparency. <coughs> Coming on to Kosovo then. Kosovo is another uh, part of the business which we stepped into in 2018 and I guess long-standing shareholders of Beowulf who were only interested in our Calacanol project didn't fully understand why the company had um, started to, to put money into to Vardar Minerals. And the reason we did that is that um, we were presented with a really intelligent exploration hypothesis by an established uh, team who, who I knew and, and it was the Tethian Belt. And in other Balkan countries, uh, you have major mining companies and juniors, a lot of Australian juniors um, investing. Serbia especially has benefited from um, waves of investment in exploration and also mining development. And Kosovo is, is, was the next address on the, uh, the list. And what we were presented with was a license package which was very attractive, Mitrovica in the north and Viti in the southeast. And, uh, and the work that had been done to, prior to actually securing those licenses was very robust. It was much in the same way that we have gone about our business. Uh, so we put money into Kosovo, uh, into, into Vardar Minerals. We've now committed 1.9 million pounds since 2018. That has funded basically the, the early stage work, um, but also drilling programs, um, predominantly focused on the Mitrovica license and towards the end of last year the geophysics. So I'm going to just touch on Mitrovica rather than uh, discuss the Viti license as well. Now I'm, I'm a mining engineer when I visit Kosovo uh, the geologists that I'm with get very excited and they're smiling a lot about what they're seeing and with this license itself uh, they talk about alteration, the geophysics, the IP, and more recently this year, because we haven't been doing actually anything physical on the ground, uh, the structural setting, 
of what, what we're seeing as well. With the Mission Beaker license, we have multiple targets and, and this made it quite challenging last year when we were in the capital racing uh, that we were doing uh, to communicate to the market what we believe the size of the prize is here. We, I was putting out uh, announcements every three to four weeks um, during the capital raising, which was the focus of, of, of the company and most of the shareholders, uh, and they probably got lost within the, the whole mix of what was going on. But within the Mitrovica license itself, we have those four targets, the main two of which are Wolf Mountain and Majan Peak. And, and Wolf Mountain is lead sink, uh, silver target, with also, also with some copper, and Majan Peak is a uh, gold target. And, oh, and the way this system was explained to me um, when I first went to Kosovo in 2018 is that both uh, horizontally and vertically, in terms of everything that you're seeing, is the classical depiction of a, a, cop a, a porphyry uh, mineralized system. Um, what we've got on the right hand side is uh, the different types of geology and the white anomalies that you can see in the lower section which are the IP anomalies that were shown up at the end of last year. Thankfully our drilling which intercepted uh, lower grade mineralization didn't intercept any of these. You could say, you know, it's, it's good and it's, it's bad but we see this. This was what we were coming into this year, uh, very excited about getting back on the ground and drilling. Um, we, we did our capital raising last year, you know, this was front and centre of what our work programme was. Unfortunately, you know, democratic elections are good, um, but the new government that came into Kosovo um, is establishing its own ICMM, which is the body that issues permits uh, for mining licences, and uh, we've had to wait for them to uh, form that new, new board to, to get our permits renewed. But as soon as those permits are renewed, um, our plan is to be drilling in the winter and, and to be hitting these targets. So really, in our objective this, this uh, year, the, through the winter, is to make a discovery. Again, uh, supply chain uh, transparency and proximity to Europe make Kosovo potentially the next really attractive address on, on the, um, providing the base, and prep, base metal specifically uh, to Europe to enable its transition. So just in summary, this is, uh, this is Beowulf. Our commitment to sustainability, sustainability is uh, our key priority and to working with the communities that we are located in. Um, the diversified portfolio um, should be attractive to investors because all of those different areas of activity are, have their dedicated teams and, and we believe the balance of uh, metals that we have in the portfolio, portfolio is well targeted to the future demands uh, of society in this transition to a green economy. Thank you very much.